and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'll be discussing the 8th overall entry into the Halloween movie franchise, the 2002 slasher Halloween Resurrection, as directed by Rick Rosenthal, who had indeed, in fact, also directed the second movie in the franchise, the very first Halloween sequel, 1981's Halloween 2. Halloween Resurrection is tipped and peddled as a direct sequel to the last movie in the franchise, 1988's Halloween H20, 20 years later, which itself sought to be a reboot of the franchise, being a direct sequel to the aforementioned original sequel, setting its own timeline and discounting the previous four movies in the franchise. So, now, bear with me on this one. So, <laughs> the thing is, whereas Halloween H2O, well, H20, I'm a chemist, so I'm going to keep saying H2O, was Halloween for the Scream generation, Halloween Resurrection, well, it's pretty much Halloween for the scary movie generation. The two movies hardly gel together at all, and I think using the term sequel is almost a flagrant misrepresentation. Sure, it certainly continues from the events of Halloween H20, but in all but 30 seconds, opts to wipe it from the, its memory, giving us something that essentially has little to do with anything at all. Now, I'll issue a warning that there will be a spoiler or two given for this movie as part of the synopsis, and so if you want to keep that treat, that treat that lies in wait for your own viewing uh, pleasure, then please do switch off now. And if you do dare to give the film a well, please do come back laden with comments, which I have no doubt that uh, you'll have a few things to say that's on your mind. So, then... Fair warning, um, indeed, the film does set off the following, or set off following, in, indeed, the events of the last movie. Three years later, in fact, with Laurie Strode, as played again by Jamie Lee Curtis, now committed to an institution following the revelation where we find out, in her final fight with her brother, notorious serial killer Michael Myers, as played by Brad Laurie, where she promptly proceeds to behead him, she actually decapitated the wrong guy. So indeed, Michael never died. Apparently, it was actually a clause in his contract. And weirdly for the franchise, not the result of a cult. But, unfortunately, despite Laurie's best efforts, this is where her journey ends. Well, at least in this arm of the franchise. We'll get to that later. As Michael catches up to her at the clinic and ultimately tricks Laurie into thinking she's got the wrong guy again which ultimately leads to her plummeting to her death. Then, then, scratch all of that. That's it. The rest of the movie now sees Michael stalking a group of irritating college students intent on becoming America's next big thing as they tar his house making an interactive internet show called, and wait for it, Dangertainment. Do I really have to say any more? Needless to say, Michael's a bit cheesed to come home after a busy day only to find a horde of teens ripping on his stuff and so promptly and rightly looks to take out the trash. Can the teens survive the night? Will Michael ever get any peace? Will anybody actually watch the show? Do we actually care? Now, all I know is people are prepared to do anything all in the name of dangertainment. Okay, so I think you've probably got the gist. I'm not 100% sold on this sequel, you know? It is all really just a bit of farce when all said and done. As just a simple slasher comedy horror, um, it's cheap and corny, but I suppose it's an easy watch. It doesn't actually really ask much of its audience, you know? As a sequel to Halloween H20, um, this carries none of the same style or swagger. None of that sleek cinematography or inviting story. Instead, it opts to write off its connection to that movie in the first act, and with it, pretty much the franchise, in preference for a nonsensical horror house slasher fest that simply leaves you totally bemused and unsatisfied. I don't know exactly what they were going for, but even if Michael Myers did have a clause in his contract to say he couldn't be killed off, this film nearly accomplishes this without any help from the legal team. Given that Rick Rosenthal had directed this and the second in the franchise, 
The two could not be further apart if he tried. He completely does away with any kind of smart dialogue in favour of the incandescent college ramblings and over-the-top psycho babble of its characters. None are likeable in any way. They're all irritating. And the most irritating of the franchise so far. And it's really, really hard to real feel sorry for them in any sort of way at all. It is just Michael's blitzing aimlessly through each one, you know, eat time after time, and that's all you've got here. It slipped right back into the tired tropes and routine massacres of the genre. Nothing edgy, nothing special, not stylish, not clever. The only thing it really is, is succinct. It has a couple of decent kills, but they're totally soulless and bland, given the fact that none of the rest of the film has any, well, it has no overall aim. Having Jamie Lee Curtis back was an absolute joke at the audience's expense. I understand the idea was to kill her off at this point, but it's so unceremoniously done. She gives a good chase for a fee, you know, to start things off. I can't fault Jamie Lee's return as Laurie Strode, but it's a kind of sad to think that this was the legacy that she had left the franchise at this point. Overall, this instalment into the Halloween franchise brings us a story, and I use that term loosely, and a bunch of characters with no connection to any of the franchise's continuity at all. Barry Brief, and I mean brief, stint from Jamie Lee Curtis. And although dubbed as a sequel to the last movie in the series, Halloween H20, Resurrection sidelines this, pretty much all of it, in favour of writing off its own existence. What could have been an effective spook house movie ends up being a sloppy mix of tacky jump scares, cheesy kills, bland and irritating, yes, irritating characters, and a real kind of off-centre irreverent humour that completely misses its target every time. I don't want to unnecessarily knock it, as a slasher, I'm sure there's some fun to be had, but it's a poor excuse for a sequel, believe you me. You are actually rooting for Michael in this one, you know? So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like, please do hit that subscribe button for my movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie related content. Absolutely loved having you at our first movie talk and definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.